Hi, it's me again. And uh, I thought we could talk today about the license fee. We haven't talked about a tele license for a while, have we? I'll tell you why later at the end, if you're interested. But um, there's a couple of stories in the last couple of weeks that I've bookmarked I thought we could talk about because standard BBC, they're absolutely taking the piss. Now, I knew this was the case, but to be honest, I've forgotten a bit about it. But look at the state of this article. Hugh Edwards set to be named highest paid newsreader at BBC despite scandal. Yep. Yep. On full pay, he's been suspended for, well, since July. And then these numbers get published around July, don't they? So that's a full year of not working on full BBC pay. And we're not talking the kind of pay that mere mortals like me and you may get. If you didn't know, his salary is quite high. In fact, he's one of the highest paid, hang on, hang on, air quotes, talent at the BBC. He's not quite in a, not quite in Big Ears, his, uh, Big Ears' his department, but who is? But it says here, look, according to the Times, Edwards is expected to still be named the corporation's highest paid newsreader, having earned up to £439,000 last year, despite his suspension. £439,000 in current licence fees, in case you're as interested, because I always am interested in this sort of thing, as you know, is £2,589. Television licences, £2,589 and 89 families that may be struggling to pay their bills. 2,589 households. That's a small town of people required to pay for a man who's not even working for it. And even if he was working for it, is he worth that kind of effort? A town, small town of people to pay for him to read the news that he's not even reading. Now, why? Why is he getting this kind of money still? That's the interesting point here, isn't it? And it does tell us in the Times. It was reported in January that the BBC's chief news presenter suffered a serious episode after the allegations were public. And it is understood that he remains too unwell to take part in the broadcaster's investigation into the claims as a convenient episode that he had, wouldn't it? I mean, if pictures of my ass were all over the internet, I'd probably have an episode as well. But do you think HR at my company would give two tosses about that? Or do you think they'd suspend me without pay until I can take part in the investigation? How are they paying this man when he can't even take part in an investigation that looks pretty, uh, you know, pretty signed and sealed to me. 2,589 television licenses down the pan and they respect our money, do they? Have a look around while I do the next one. It's nice down here today. A bit nippy though, a little bit nippy today. But it's nice down the prom. This is the Promenade Park in Malden, if you didn't know. Right, next one. If you if the Hugh Edwards one made you cross, there's a fair shot that this one's gonna really make you quite cross. BBC spends four hundred thousand pounds on school fees for just twenty children of foreign based journalists in latest row over use of license fee funds. Now I have said it before on here. I don't understand why the BBC needs so many foreign journalists. No other news publication or news outlet operates like that. Obviously, you've got to have a few, but air travel's not exactly expensive now. So if a big thing happens in the world, chuck someone on a plane, right? Or do what Sky News does and tie up with some other news outlets in the world and share correspondence. So when something happens in the UK, the American ones or the foreign news outlets can have access to some Sky News correspondence, and it works the other way around. So 
say something happens in another part of the world, Sky News talk to them and use their footage and their reporters. Now that's how you do it while saving a few quid, right? So I don't understand why you need so many foreign journalists. And I've talked about it before. You've got to put them up. You've got to, you've got to get them somewhere to live and they ain't going to live in a crap hole, are they? Because the BBC doesn't operate like that. And not just put them up somewhere. You've got to have the offices, infrastructure, back office teams, admin staff. You've got to give them a car because they're working abroad. Probably get an allowance for food or something, you know? You know if I have to go on a work trip, I get overnight allowances and food allowances, stuff like that. School fees, really? You have to pay private school fees. Would these children be in private school? Would these reporters' children be in private school if they're in the UK? Maybe, but then that's their problem. They'd have to pay for it, wouldn't they? The BBC wouldn't. So if they choose to put them in private school while they're working abroad, how's that the BBC's problem? Again, £400,000. So Hugh Edwards, what was that? It was two hundred and two hundred two thousand five hundred eighty nine TV licenses, wasn't it? So what's four hundred thousand pounds? Let's have a look. Two thousand three hundred and fifty nine TV licenses. So in the last few minutes of talking, we have found out what's happened to bloody nearly five thousand tele licenses. Five thousand. That's how much the BBC give a shit about you. Through no reason, 5,000 TV licenses have gone down the pan. Now, I'm in Malden now, which is what? A medium-sized town, I guess. I've just Googled it. I can't find how many households there are, but it's got a population of 66,000. So let's say two people in a household on average. I know it doesn't work like that. I mean, two or three. So it's like 30,000. So it is a small town of people. We have just, blimey, it's windy. A small town of people that we have just found that has been completely squandered by the BBC. How the hell does that work? There's so many news articles now about the license fee and the BBC and the scandals of which and the cost of it where it's gone up and stuff. And all the news outlets are talking about it. But why is no one talking about the fact that five, nearly 5,000 TV licenses have just been pissed up the wall by the BBC when you still see headlines like this. Nearly 2,000 prosecuted for TV license evasion by Northumbria courts in a year. 2,000 people were prosecuted in Northumbria alone in 2022. Where is the argument for this ridiculous tax? Where is it? Yeah, they're taking good people to court and finding them, which, you know, regular viewers of this channel will know that it's not possible to get into trouble for TV. You shouldn't be watching stuff you shouldn't be watching, I always say that. But if you don't talk to these people, there's no other way. They've come out recently, I've, I've bookmarked it, I'm going to talk about it probably tomorrow, that the detector van's a complete myth. They've, they've basically admitted that now. But the BBC do not care about anything other the money. 2000 in just in Northumbria, <laughs> 2,000 prosecutions in a year. It's unbelievable. And I can scare you with this thousand pound fine thing. And that's complete bollocks. The average fine, about 150 quid. But they they go for all that effort to scare people and to take people to court just to piss nearly 5,000 licenses up the wall. Just in these two stories, I could go on for days. I could find tens of thousands. Well, I have found tens of thousands of TV licenses. Just divide Gary Lineker's salary of about 1.31 million by 169.50. <laughs> That's quite a lot of telly licenses. Absolutely pissed up the wall. Uh, I don't know. Change is going to have to come and hit. It's going to have to come. I just find it crazy that they're still getting away with this massive scam. I shouldn't be walking this way. It's windy. But I do need to go this way, because it's the way back to the office. Nippy today. It's been really warm, hasn't it, the last few days? But yeah, I'm sorry I haven't been about. Oh, Christ, let's get away from this. I'm sorry I haven't been about, because uh, 
I got back from Spain, it was about a week back from Spain, and I uh, contracted deadly man flu. And it's bad enough you have to look at me on camera anyway, but no one wants to be looking at me. I had snot pouring out of my nose and I was coughing constantly. So, uh, yeah, that's why I've not been about. But uh, I'm on the mend. Still a bit of a cough. But I think I might pull through. But anyway, let me know what you think about this. If you want to read these articles, because obviously I've only just skimmed it a bit. Right? If you want to read the full articles, in the description below, as always. And, uh, while you're down there, clicking them. Leave your comment. Let me know what you think about this. And if you do all that, and click all the buttons and the subscribe button if you haven't already as well. If you do all that, I'll see you in another one again soon, won't I? Hopefully, if I recover from this flu. Ta-da.